I'm Neil Burgess, the director of the Institute of Cognitive Neuroscience. Um, well, I remember in um, the mid-90s, 1996, when the Institute of Cognitive Neuroscience uh, was formed as a, as a virtual institute. I was uh, working with John O'Keefe in the anatomy department and the um, Functional Imaging Lab had recently moved to Queen Square and it was very exciting to see an attempt to bring together people interested in uh, neurological patients and um, animal in vivo electrophysiology and uh, cognitive psychology and functional neuroimaging all sort of being brought together to try to see what uh, common ground there was in, in trying to understand how the brain works and so that seemed like a very exciting thing and then of course that was a, a, essentially an, an email list a, a newspaper uh, sorry a you know a virtual newsletter and some interesting talks but then uh, in the late 90s when it became clear that there was going to be an actual physical building co-located with the Gatsby computational neuroscience unit and you know in Queen Square near the National Hospital for Neurology and next to the functional imaging lab um, it became very exciting and I, I was very keen to move in um, straight away. I think since then uh, things have developed it's become much more mature science you know uh, at the time cognitive neuroscience was a in a way, a, a sort of new, strange intermeshing of different uh, disciplines, cognitive psychology, neurology, um, electrophysiology, and so on. And now it's become a mature science where, you know, most, uh, most major universities would have a cognitive neuroscience department. And um, so I, and I think the ICN has matured too, where now it's, um, you know, a mainstream department full of people doing cutting edge cognitive uh, neuroscience and um, I'm very happy to still be part of it and I think these links with other other parts of UCL are still very important so the links with uh, neuroscience physiology and pharmacology and with the Wellcome Trust Center for Neuroimaging which is still there and with the hospital and the Institute of Neurology and of course the the you know main part of the staff here associated with psychology and language sciences um, and now many of the tools that we started using before, like uh, MEG and fMRI, um, are mainstream tools and you know, the, the sort of boundary is moving beyond them, how they can be combined with other things. Uh, I think um, there are some challenges to being interdisciplinary or placed sort of between different entities. So, Originally, the ICN was uh, between different faculties even. Um, now we're all within the Faculty of Brain Sciences just due to reorganizations of, of departments within UCL. But it's still a challenge to be able to have a cutting edge research institute that combines lots of different topics uh, within the sort of standard administrative and financial structures of uh, a normal university where it's not quite clear how you can align all of that research with appropriate teaching so that you can benefit from uh, the funding available for teaching and the funding available for research and make sure that you get the sort of interaction, the added value you get for um, having experts in, in research areas be able to teach on those topics. And obviously, over the years, we've started the um, MSc and MSci in Cognitive Neuroscience, which is uh, one way of doing that and that helps a lot um, but there are still some questions as to how we fit in with uh, undergraduate teaching and postgraduate teaching and how we can encourage uh, members of the Institute of Neurology or the uh, Division of Psychiatry to be a full part of, of the Institute of Cognitive Neuroscience even though administratively um, it's not quite so clear how you can do that. 